Another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be VSL Season 15, even though it says Season 14 on the header. I'm still waiting on updated graphics in that regard. Hotsu League Round of 16 Group B. This is the last replay I have of Group B. So it'll be telling if Do Life or Tank wins. Up right in corner, we have Do Life starting as the green turn. Bottom left in corner, we have Tank starting as the... I want to say blue, but it's more like a gray. Gray turn. This is on Vermeer. Which I've heard mixed feelings about as far as a, a map that is not the natural expansion. There's the natural expansion. Kind of an interesting choke with the two eggs right on the corner. And it got kind of a funnel effect, as you can see, as far as units entering in. I feel like that is more of a factor in turn defenses with siege tanks with the splash damage. And in PvP, when Reavers end up being played, we have this expansion nearby, which does have the northern entrance. But... With that, with these bridges and whatnot, you can see it's kind of easier to defend. Then you have kind of these high grounds that are spoked at odd angles around the map. Usually you'll see this as like more of a vertical, but it's almost kind of like a staggered... It's kind of, yeah, out of an odd staggered angle and not your stereotypical engagement points. Although you can see this ramp right here between the two at cross positions could end up being a factor as, you know, downward ramp to kind of meander. But point being, there's a lot of open space in the middle of the map, which can result in some very interesting ground fighting. I, it is a wide enough natural expansion where vultures very likely are still going to play a very significant role, so I'm expecting the standard early vulture meta to reign supreme, do life grabbing his refinery, as is tank, so neither player going for anything too crazy as far as early expansions. Have a barracks being built to the southern corner and to the northern corner for tank. Tank scouting bottom right hand corner first. Do life going for a clockwise scout. So both players going to get information about the same time. And I think both of these SCVs should scoot right into the base and get the straight up scouting information. I believe this supply depot on location for tank does speed up his gas production just a smidge. You kind of see it as the SCVs are wandering off. It looks like one of them pulling off the line to go ahead and plop down that factory, first factory starting, and it looks like we are just about dead even here. Do life somehow up just half a supply, and I'm wondering if that is because of SCV scouting timing. Or I don't know, it's possible he was mineral boosting or just selecting certain minerals that were more efficient. Happens in this match. One SCV in gas for him as well to go ahead and get that command center a little bit more rapidly, so it looks like it is gonna be one factory and expansion for both players. Marine blockading the ramp both sides. This SCV for Tank doing the better job and actually scooching in and getting the decent scouting information do life backing out with that SCV now. And do life producing an initial vulture has had trouble reaching the round of eight, but I feel like with this particular grouping, he's got a lot of tournament experience under his belt now. He's been in Hostel League, knows what to expect, and I feel like a lot of these other guys that are entering, they're, they're good players, but I don't feel like they're as... We'll see if they're as experienced as I say that tank wandering up. Just catch both the Vulture and the Command Center. Well played to get that scouting information. Do life doing the same in the opposite corner on a bit of a delay. Looks like there's one less Marine on that front. That Vulture should be able to hunt down that SCV without too much trouble. But Do Life, right this second, seems to just be a little bit ahead in the macro. Just slightly too supply ahead. He's tacking on additional factory, additional factory on other side. I'm expecting the action will really get underway once we speed, speed upgraded and that third factory in play, which I'm expecting from both sides. There's that speed being triggered here for tank. An additional vulture being fielded before speed actually going mines first on do life side not sure i like that play especially there should be an expectation of vulture versus vulture here it is possible he wants to go ahead and get a siege tank out sooner rather than later four troops still holding towards the front SCVs transferring transferring to that natural expansion and we'll see if this is yeah an indicator with this mine upgrade that do life is going to opt for a more defensive posture nope he's plopping down that third factory as well 
So this is going to give an advantage to tank overall because vultures don't trigger mines and there's really not a lot on tank side of the map for a long period of time that will trigger mines that will give some vision for do life down the line but vulture speed is what allows you to just gun down into natural expansions and pick off SCVs in heavy fire and oftentimes just diving in and suiciding at cross positions with the ability to produce vultures at high speeds and kind of pile them in and have some high ground firing shot it just makes all the difference in the world but mines planted to the north the one advantage this is going to give do life is especially if he goes for the vulture speed upgrade immediately to follow is he's going to have better map vision to see where the vultures are wandering around for tank because anti-mine doesn't come up for a very long period of time and so he's absolutely going to have the vision advantage that is going to cut down slightly into the amount of vultures going for those additional upgrades but you can see he's going to be at least able to move out and see a lot of that action tank wandering in sees double machine shop and i take it back there's the tank follow-up so do life again yeah wants more defensive posture do mines trigger other mines i'm actually curious about this do life backing out something i hadn't thought of i don't think they do but they detect each other right Vulture Squad flying out there. There's a lot of vultures in the defensive position to the north. Looks like mines have been upgraded for tank as well. He's got four factories, so definitely thinking about being aggressive here. And trying to deny that third base or maybe get some SCVs. But as the tanks start filtering in for do life, that is going to increase his ability to repel speedy run by vulture attacks if only by sitting out and blocking the ramp with their face or blocking the natural expansion with their face as soon as you have enough tanks to kind of line up fourth factory attacking down a little bit later now for dude life he's got plus one weapons on the way no armory on the other side of the map that is going to give an overall upgrade advantage to do life vultures have mostly just been staring each other down finally getting caught i like tanks positioning going ahead and Hanging out. Two vultures down. Do life. Returning back to home base. Tank with a big macro lead. Has just been pumping. But keep in mind that's mostly because he's been pumping vulture, vulture, vulture. Which is typical in this meta where you had those siege tanks which just take longer to build. On do life's side of the map. He's going to attack on and go up to five factories. And he's probably going to need it to go out and establish something on the map. So this is going to get really aggressive really fast. The plus one weapons could be a big factor. Barracks being repaired by that SCV that was latent out in the field. So once plus one weapons is finished, I would expect do life to potentially get a little bit more aggressive. Maybe start wandering out and thinking about grabbing additional base. It looks like actually, as I say that, he's already got an SCV in position to grab that tank. Go ahead and give kind of map vision. You can see the map vision on do life side versus tank side tanks both players being a little bit oops wrong player there being a little bit more defensive with their mine posturing you can see just keeping the mines on their side of the map rather than trying to wander across and mine opposite side spoke and both players going for a third base and this has been a very action light game thus far both players straight up macroing plus one weapons about to finish for do life and I still haven't seen... There's the armory for Tank. Academy also being built. Comsats. Flurry of Comsats for Life to go ahead and get a little bit of scouting information. He is down in supply, but... I think he actually still might have... Yeah, he still has a superior number of siege tanks. However, if he was wandering out into Tank's attack lines, Tank does have positioning already with those tanks across the interior six o'clock right now though it seems like both players are just content to straight macro 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 get to three bases and play the match from there repaired barracks is going to float back out to try to get the scouting information it can scv wandering in to attack force did see scvs transferring so i believe there is knowledge of that third base Tank with a supply lead down on SCVs. 
and I believe down on pure siege tanks, but this vulture grouping, I'm not sure how many of these vultures have any mines left is the other question, because a lot of mines got planted out in the field, and it's not like those vultures have pushed forward and died to then be replaced with another vulture with a new set of mines. Third gas coming online. Do life a little bit ahead in getting that third gas. Five factories with three machine shops on do life side. It looks like we're going to see six factories for tank. Adding that starport, plus one weapons coming along the way. That will allow him to get access to that plus two weapon starport about halfway for do life as well. And I'm wondering with that starport if there is going to be. Yep, there's the science facility to get science vessel out to maybe do some mine clearage. Still a very quiet play on both sides. Do Life has mined the expansion's bottom right-hand corner, upper left-hand corner to deny them to his opponent. But both players have just sat back and done nothing but macro up to this stage. SAV is continuing to saturate. Side Sea Shank line, neither expending any troops. Do Life down eight supply, but up 10 workers and has plus one weapons and is going to have plus one weapons for a considerable period of time. Third machine shop being dropped from Tank, but Tank, despite his namesake, is going to be lower on the overall Tank count. In fact, the only three Tanks I see on the map right now are near that 6 o'clock location. It looks like we do have a small grouping here near the Natural. But do life starting to press forward. Both players look like they want to play this in, again, just kind of a long-term Get the economic lead, maybe wait for 200 or 200 before even playing. Supply counts are even. Segna Armory coming online for Do Life, and it looks like it is finally going to be a move out here from Do Life across the northern portion of the map. Maybe going to sweep across the left. Here in Broken Replay from Twitch. Not a broken replay, just, you know, TVT on a big macro oriented map. That's, uh, it happens. Try to keep it interesting for you guys. We'll see some fighting. The vultures actually backing out like cowards on the east, on the western side of the map, and just comps adding and bowling them back. It is nothing but vultures here. The tanks now sieging up a few mines on the front, quickly picked off by the counter vultures and comps at. And despite having the high ground advantage and some misfire, tank has a lot. Or sorry, Dulaif has a lot to punch through this. However, Siege Tank's reinforcing from the low ground, and that with the misfire could be enough. But Tank right now, as far as that initial engagement, you can just see how the supply is absolutely plummeted between the two. He's got five Siege Tanks standing versus the eight to the north. As well as some mines to go ahead and force some misfires. So Tank, three Siege Tanks left versus a slew. Dulaif could probably just walk down. Reinforcing with a lot of vultures, and actually, as soon as a bunch of vultures wander up here and just unsiege and meander up, there's some Goliaths with this attack force that is not going to be a sufficient unit differential. And it looks like a lot of those siege tanks were softened up. So, do life taking that critical western prong to threaten that third base of his opponent and the siege tanks, yeah, just walking straight down, plus one weapons, plus one armor, versus just plus one weapons now. Natural, sorry, the third base under fire. Four siege tanks sieging under that right-hand side ramp. SCV's initially thinking about running into these siege tanks and attacking, but thinking better of it and holding up. But still, fire raining across this third base. Right now, tank having to lift off. It does not look like tank has any additional troops coming up. Insufficient numbers to defend or stop this. Additional vultures reinforcing for do life and do life now with a significant supply lead shutting down that third base giving him a big lead overall more siege tanks pushing forward it looks like tank potentially thinking about going for a counterattack. he has grabbed the six o'clock base so even though he's lost that mineral only he'll be okay if do life doesn't continue to pressure it looks like do life is going to go ahead and grab that 12 o'clock base himself so that still will keep him down a base as long as this command center is not landed in mining, but he'll still at least have three bases 
as far as a gap to keep his economy running. He does need to play economic catch-up. Down six, uh, 30 supply right this second. Command Center floating back to go ahead and get that repair. More vultures and tanks fielding for do life. Six o'clock base. Being defended by the siege tanks to the north and the natural expansion. It's kind of an interesting... Didn't realize that about Vermeer is if you end up losing some territory here, as long as you hold that southern spoke and outside the natural, you can really swat a lot of these attacks. Vultures peeking forward, planting some mines. Mine getting nothing. Elias able to clear. Ooh, Siege Tank, though. Killing one of his own. Wraith poking. Seeing a lack of anti-air. Tank fielding a Wraith. To peck away at the Siege Tanks to the left. Mine's getting cleared. And is there going to be... Are the Marines going to start fielding? Or are we going to start seeing Goliaths? Looks like a, some Goliaths are on cue, but it's going to be a while. So do life pressing units in. Vultures attacking those siege tanks to the left. The wraith still poking away, and it almost feels like Dulife panicked a little bit there with that wraith in play and shoved his units into an unfavorable position, allowing Tank to go ahead and clean them up. He's going to go ahead and retreat mid-map, see if he tries to reestablish that western spoke. In the meantime, he does have that 12 o'clock base up, but it is not yet mining, whereas this base is now mining, as well as the mineral only. Sorry, not mineral only, the previous third base. Vulture is also wandering up to the 12 o'clock location and halting production here. So Tank, now with the supply lead, just about even on workers and ahead in a base. Double defense matrix as do life pressing in. Absorbing a lot of shots and really tearing through do life's siege tank count mid-map. Vultures and Goliaths Streaming out to save that 12 o'clock expansion. All of a sudden, do life in trouble. Down 20 supply. Down a mining base. And his forward attack forces have been eliminated. He does have the weapons upgrade advantage. If he stayed on top of it, his main looking thin as far as upgrades, or as far as uh, minerals go. Looks like plus two weapons, plus two armor just about finished. Plus two weapons, plus one armor, though, have finished for the tank. So on the turnaround, he was able to get ahead in the overall upgrade count. So now supply lead, more siege tanks on the ground. A wraith, which has been a big X factor. Do life continuing to press forward to be aggressive. Reestablishing position on that western spoke. Has that 12 o'clock base saturated on only, only a single SCV in gas, however, at that northern corridor. But right now, if you kind of look at the vision, Tank has pretty good vision on his side of the map. Actually, Do Life doesn't have bad, bad vision. It's just pretty good clearage. Tank grouping up, looking to be the aggressor. Tank with the bulk of his army moving into the middle while Do Life is pressing along that right-hand edge. So he's kind of got troops on both sides. And I think Tank, if he just dives into one side and dives into the other, might be able to clear out both. Or actually, if he felt like it, he could probably cut the Gordian knot, walk right in between. Maybe pressure do life at his natural expansion, because he doesn't he does have this defensive attack force here, but he doesn't have a lot else between point A and point B. So it needs to be. A little bit careful as he's meandering towards the right tank with the high ground once again do life through several portions of this map has been attacking into tanks high ground positioning speaking of tanks more tanks pressing forward taking a few shots with that forward comp sat but whittling into that siege tank grouping to the right and they're bunched up so Kind of bunched up on both sides. So any shot that lands, doing significant amounts of splash, it looks like Do Life wanting to cut off the right-hand side of the map so he can go ahead and attack this three o'clock location and sneak ahead in the economic battle. Main is mined out for both players. SV are actually transferring ahead of this to that three o'clock location. 
Look out, because Tank's Wraith is pressing forward. This time, there are Goliaths on site. Tank not really babysitting them, so quick, quick takedown. Quick, wicked takedown. And do life almost trying to create kind of like a vice, it looks like. You got a bunch of vultures and spotting in the middle. You got this right hand side starting to pressure in. Do life reinforcing to the left. And you can see that's allowing tank to just kind of bunch. The issue is, is I feel like where do life's attack forces are split, tank can concentratedly attack one direction or another. As he's doing right now group attacking into that left-hand corridor. Unfortunately, not doing so with the entirety of his army, and it looks like without sufficient troops to breach Dewlife. Tank with level 3 weapons has the troop count advantage, but left a bulk of his troops that he needed to attack into a high ground position, and so ends up losing a lot of troops on the low ground. Yeah, I feel like if he just... Uh, no half measures. Groups up, swats one side. I think he'll have time to turn around and swat the other, if he wanted to. Right now, boxed into three bases. Fourth base is up for due life. He'll be mining. Natural expansion is gone for both players, or close to gone for both players. Single vulture able to sneak through for tanks somehow to that 12 o'clock base. But now due life once again taking a lead in this match as he's able to establish several expansions. It looks like he's going to try to take the upper left-hand corner as well. Plus three armor, plus three weapons are on the way. Plus three weapons are already finished for tanks, so his units hit harder. He does have a supply lead, but needs to take some bases. A vulture currently camping at the four o'clock location to go ahead and deny that tank now grouping up with Vultures and Sea Shanks. And again, I feel like, yeah, there's a nice... Kind of interesting... A TVT on Vermeer can be pretty interesting here, I'm realizing, because there's just a lot of territory that you need to worry about. Because you got these high ground locations, but players can just do this. Walk straight through the middle sometimes as well. Which is what Tank is doing, walking straight towards that natural expansion. You like needs to defend this. You can see him drawing troops back. Tank repositioning to the left. Do life does have the high ground. Tank sieging up. Reinforcements coming from the left. And it looks like, yeah, do life not bothering to siege, just gonna try to walk down into this. And he is gonna have. Just a, do life just having a superior attack grouping because a lot of. You got a lot of these tanks grouped up to the south. defending, so able to completely squash that army. Three clock base is humming. Upper left hand base is up. Tank trying to find a base that isn't mined. He's going to need to comsat and get something down here, but he's got to walk through. Dulife currently has that boxed out. Maybe he wants to build SCVs on location. So right now, Dulife in a position to starve Tank out. Because all he has to do is defend the left hand spoke defend this right-hand position, and that is going to eliminate potential bases for Tank in the late game. Do life pressing down from the spoke, coming in piecemeal once again and leading more siege tanks. Do life backing right back up to hold that high ground position. But this is... This third base is starting to look a little bit light for Tank. The 6 o'clock base will soon be the only base running. In the meantime, do life grabbing the upper left-hand corner. Command Center lands. Do life spots it, drops some additional mines just to let that Command Center know you are not welcome here. Level 3 weapons, level 3 armor. Level 3 armor not in place for Tank as of yet. But he has a significant supply lead. It looks like he's going to... I think I missed a Wraith upper left-hand corner there. Something diving upper left-hand corner there. Weird, because the turrets weren't up, so I'm not sure what took care of it. Tank pressing in mid-map. Do life... I don't... 
still should have the supply to deal with it because again there's just an over many maybe too many tanks right there some vultures able to sneak through as a result plant some mines looks like they are going to be able to halt that upper left hand base but as far as tanks concerned i don't know that these are wins because a win would be able to land a command center of his own so able to slow do life's economy down a tad but do life still has extra i mean he's still running on three bases SCV's transferring. Is it going to be... Yeah, they... so at least the Vulture is able to clear out. New Life dedicating a lot of tanks this direction just in case. This might be open up an out-of-position attack for Vultures to flood at some location. But right now you got a decent-sized attack force for Do Life defending that 3 o'clock base, another siege tank pile defending the upper left, and that is all that really needs to happen. Both players maxed out. Mines being cleared mid-map. Tank needs to find a location to do two things. First of all, slow Do Life's economy down. Second of all, get a base running for his own. Then third base now out of minerals, so he is on a single base where you can see several bases humming and humming and well saturated for Do Life. So it is turning into starvation match. Honestly, I feel like TVT is the most World War One ish of any of the matchups. Sea Shanks, Vulture scooping through mid-map for tank. Able to clear out a good grouping there. Has a good cohesive attack force. He's wanting to pressure, it looks like, that 3 o'clock location. More reinforcements streaming down for Do Life. And it looks like he... Is he going to set up for... I'm wondering if there's a Battlecruiser switch coming. Probably not necessary at this stage. Do Life does have purchase... Sorry, Tank does have purchase, but moving up with a big Siege Tank line along that left doesn't look like this is going to be sufficient reinforcements to stop these rolling tanks. However, Do Life does have the tanks to the south that he can reinforce towards that 3 o'clock location. Do Life needs to keep on top of Macro, though. Tank has stayed on top of it. So right now, Do Life has the minerals but needs to refill the pot, as it were. Vultures working on siege tanks here along that western quadrant. Finally getting pecked away at. Tank at 200-200 is mining his last minerals right this second. Do life with a sizable bank, but down 20 supply. So Tank needs to make decisions now where where to attack to. Only four siege tanks on the defense. Along this western spoke, Tank bullying his way across. Certainly going to threaten that 9 o'clock and potentially can take that as his own. Reinforcements, however, for Do Life. Going to siege just short of that ridge. That will allow some turrets to get taken out. But I don't think that is going to be sufficient. Turret doing some damage there to the north. Comsat battle now on both sides just to find whether there's someone on an edge. And it looks like Do Life able to halt that attack. But here's the thing for Tank. Command center still building. And really he needs a command center immediately. He's got 1,300 minerals. And that is it. So in the fight of his life here is Do Life. Tagline. It's like when they say the title of the movie. Tank's pressing into breach at the 3 o'clock. So Tank pressuring Do Life's ability to deal with multiple attacks on multiple fronts. It looks like this 3 o'clock base is going to get wiped out. Some Goliaths and tanks moving out for Do Life, but he still hasn't hit 200 supply. How many factories are we working with? We do have seven factories back here. Hard to find building space, as I understand, on Vermeer. So Tank at least able to stop two bases from mining, but he still has not established a mining base of his own. Do life down 
Sorry, tank down to 600. And floating above, so maybe a bit of a pirate victory here. Unless he can float a command center out. To get precious additional mineral lifeblood rolling. Another group... Right now, tank, despite being down on minerals, is just simply out macroing Do Life. And Do Life kind of down on the APM as well. Missing a comp set right there. Now landing it. Going to clear out those. So tank pressing in again to the 9 o'clock. Do Life now waking up and starting to macro a bit in the background. More siege tanks making their way towards the left-hand corner. It looks like we've got six stalwart tanks remaining. The last vestiges of the minerals for tank pressing forward. However, a big line of siege tanks immediately replenishing. And that is going to clear out that western flank. Tank can no longer pressure the 9 o'clock location, nor has he moved a command center out to grab that 3 o'clock. Maybe he wants to pull some of these plentiful SCVs into battle. As they are under threat, do life walking into the empty third. Tank looks like he might do the same, potentially towards the natural expansion. Some Siege Tanks and Goliaths on the low ground. Engaging here. Tank out of minerals and starting to lose infrastructure. Reinforcements from Dulife from the natural expansion pressing into the last remaining attack force for tank. Not even bothering to siege. Does have a defense matrix on that northern siege tank and tank and a GG right there. Dulife wins. I believe this allows him to advance to the round of eight. And we will move on to Group C. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.